This is Tokwe from Hidden Treasures and Riches. How are you doing today? Uh, we help Christian women transform their trials. Hello. Good evening. This is Tokwe. I'm excited that you're here. Uh, we help Christian women transform their trials into purpose. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, prayer. Uh, this is the fastest the, uh, wireless connection there is. And um, do you struggle to pray? So let me ask you this. Do you struggle to pray? At there times you don't know how to pray for others? Um, today, we, as we talk about prayer, we're going to especially focus on intercessory prayer. And this is just simply uh, praying for others. So another way to say pray for others. So many of us are familiar with prayer but we often struggle because we make it sometimes complicated because we're trying to fit a formula like there's a particular way or a set way we think we're supposed to pray uh, and then other times we're simply just not sure how to pray um, it's very simple prayer is just communicating with god that's it it's like one-on-one -on -one communication as you and i are talking right now or talking to a friend um, so that's that's prayer. Uh, Jesus gave us a model prayer in Matthew uh, to guide us. But then there are other forms of prayer as well. Uh, but again, just the basic form of prayer is just a conversation with God, telling him what's on your heart, just like you would uh, if you were meeting a friend with, uh, for coffee. You'd sit over a cup of coffee and you would ch chit chat and just catch up. That's the same way. Um, we can also use scriptures. So sometimes when we don't know what to say or how to pray, we can use scriptures to form the basis of our prayers. So today I want us to focus on intercessory prayer. And again, that's praying for some, somebody else, for other people. Do you pray for others regularly? Why should we pray for others? When we pray for others, here's what we're saying. We trust God and we're depending on him. We're partnering with him where he's at work in other people's lives and, uh, and standing in the gap for them, like that, coming alongside of them, standing in the gap, seeing where God is at work in their lives and supporting them in that way. So it shows our trust and dependence on God. So let me illustrate this with a story I had recently. Um, a mom uh, and her son were home and the son announced that he was going to run errands. But shortly before he announced that, the mom felt a nudge in her spirit to pray for her son. So she called him over and she prayed over him. And she, while she was praying, she got a sense in her spirit to, to plead the blood of Jesus. So she pled the blood of Jesus over her son. And then the son went to run the errands. I mean, this is common every day. People go run errands, right? Well, it turns out that while her son was running errands, he ended up in, in, in a neighborhood. He was going to deliver uh, something. And while he was still in the car, a gunman was just going randomly down the street and just shooting at random. So this uh, son ducked in his vehicle and there were bullets flying all around him. It was very scary. Um, his car was hit by several bullets, but do you know what? This young man was not hit at all. The, the, no, no bullets hit him. He was not injured. He was not harmed. Uh, even though the shots, you know, hit his car, it didn't, it didn't harm him. He came out alive. So this mom's story is an example of intercessory prayer. Uh, do you, let me ask you this. Do you ever get a nudge to pray for someone? What do you do? Do you kind of get up and do it or do you kind of just ignore it and say, ah, it's just my thinking? Well, friend, I just want to tell you, because this mom did not ignore that gentle nudge in her spirit, she partnered with God where he was at work already. In the spirit, God knew what was coming. That's why he put that nudge in her spirit to pray for her son. And if she hadn't prayed, only God knows what would have happened. But I can guarantee you that prayer saved his life. So, do you believe, let me ask again, do you believe that God hears you when you pray? That he hears and answers when we pray? 
uh, in Hebrews 4, 6 says that uh, we are to come boldly, uh, to approach the throne of grace boldly uh, and with confidence so that we may receive mercy at the time of our need. God answers prayers. He answers our prayers. Um, he answers them in his own timing. He hears us. He answers our prayers. And there are many examples in the Bible of intercessory prayers of men and women who interceded for others in the Bible. So I'm sure you're familiar with this, uh, Moses. I'm sure you're familiar with Esther, uh, Deborah, Nehemiah. These are just a few. But today I want us to look at one particular example. And this is from Daniel uh, in chapter 9 while Daniel interceded for the Jews while they were in exile. So the Jews were in captivity and they were going to be there for 70 years. It was nearing the end of their time there. And Daniel uh, was reading the scriptures. And, and while he was reading the scriptures, he saw where it said they would be in exile for 70 years. And so that prompted him to say, oh, I need to be praying. And so he went into this uh, mode of prayer and fasting for his nation. Um, he pleaded with God. Uh, he confessed. It, he confessed uh, the sins, the corporate sins of the people. He asked God for forgiveness and for mercy. Daniel pleaded with God for for all of the Jews. And here's what Daniel did. Um, uh, Daniel. This is Daniel uh, nine verses two and three. It says, um, in the first year of his reign. I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord, given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. So I turned to the Lord and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. So Daniel prayed. At there are times when you don't know how to pray, well, I, will, I would like to suggest that you read Daniel 9 and look at that, his prayer and use that as a model for how you might uh, pray for others, be an intercessor for others. Uh, Daniel's beautiful prayer on behalf of the Jews uh, in chapter 9 is, is, is one that we should all study. And here's how Daniel starts out that prayer. It's a long prayer, but so I won't go through all of it, but I just want to show you the beginning and the end of it. So at the beginning, here's how Daniel starts out. Oh Lord, you are great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against against you and scorned your commands and regulations. We have refused to listen to your servants and the prophets who spoke on your authority to our kings and our princes and ancestors and to all the people of the land. How's that for a prayer? That is, he's owning it. He's fessing up. He's saying, we're guilty as charged. You are sovereign, Lord, but we are guilty. Here is what we've done. And here's how he ends his prayer. Um, at the end, Daniel pleads again, Oh Lord, hear your servant's prayer. Listen as I plead for your own sake. Lord, smile again on your desolate sanctuary. Oh my God, lean down and listen to me. Open your eyes and see our despair. See how your city, the city that bears your name, lies in ruins. We make this plea not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. Oh Lord, hear. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, listen and act for your own sake. Do not delay, oh my God, for your people and your city that bear your name. Do you see that? Daniel was very humble. He came in humility and he asked God on behalf of the people to relent, to forgive, to have mercy. And not because of them, not because they are good, but because of God's, for God's sake, to have mercy on them. So before Daniel finished, do you know what happened? Before Daniel finished that prayer, uh, God sent an angel to give him understanding and insight. 
So friend, do you want to be in the company of angels? Do you want to be an intercessor, uh, a prayer warrior, someone who war warrior, I mean, someone who prays on behalf of others? Well, Daniel is an example that we can follow. Listen, if we want to be in the company of angels, we've got to pray. We've got to pray. And Daniel shows us this example. We will, we will win the most significant battles of our lives on our knees in prayer. That's where the battle is won. It's in prayer. So do you have loved ones who are struggling, maybe in their physical health, mental health, or maybe on their job or whatever the issues may be? There's no situation that's too difficult. Just like Daniel brought this situation about the, the Jews, we too can bring our situations to the Lord in prayer. We can intercede for our friends. We can intercede for our families. We can stand in the gap for them. So friend, I, you remember that I said this is a wireless, uh, wireless connection? It's the best one. It's free. Let's tap into it. Let's not, when we get those nudges to pray for others, let's not ignore it. Let's not think, oh, that's just my thinking. No, that's the Lord calling us to partner with him. So let's join the Lord. Uh, this connection is super fast, is dependable, it's reliable. There are no drop calls. There are no dead zones. There are no error messages. I mean, it's, it's the best deal in town. So let's embrace prayer. Let's embrace that power of prayer, of intercession for others. We can pray for our nation, not only just even individuals. We can pray for our nation. We can pray for situations all over the world. So friend, let me ask you this. In what ways have you experienced the power of intercessory prayer? I shared the example of that mom with you, and I could, I mean, I've got tons of examples I could share with you, but that was just one. And then, hi, Crystal. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining. So I shared the example of Daniel. And so let's partner with God where he's at work. And do you know what? As you become a prayer warrior, as you intercede for others, God will fight your battles for you. So let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of intercession that we can partner with you where you are at work and that you can speak to our hearts. You can show us how to pray for others. Thank you for that mom that, that you not gently and she obeyed. She prayed for her son. Father, only you know what would have happened if she had not. And so, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to help us to become intercessors. We intercede today for our nation, for our leaders. We ask, Lord, for wisdom for them, for insight. We ask that you help them to govern us right. We thank you, Father, that you brought us one year through this pandemic. You have kept us. And Father, we ask Almighty God that you continue to help us uh, to the end of this pandemic, to see it to the end. And Father, Lord, Thank you for all that you've done for us. I pray, almighty Jesus, for, uh, for your goodness and your mercy over our land, over our nation, over all the nations of the world. I pray for our children. I pray for the, uh, for the healthcare workers and all those who are on the front lines, who have been weathering this uh, COVID uh, pandemic that is almost coming to an end. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the power of intercession. Thank you for the example of Daniel. May we become powerful prayer warriors and instruments in your hands. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, friend. Uh, Crystal, thanks again for joining. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, remember that we serve you here every Friday at 7. Um, remember that you can have true peace no matter the size of your storm. God loves you and he wants to show you the hidden treasures in your trials. So please like this video, share it, and uh, invite others to, to watch or listen to it. See you next Friday. Have a wonderful uh, weekend. And remember, I love you, but God loves you more. God bless. Bye.